During the first uh, interview, we talked in general about the, the farm, what's here, the size and so on. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the second part, I uh, would like to talk about more into the de details. But uh, before we uh, go in depth into each uh, part, cows, um, chicken, vegetables, um, the, and so on. Uh, I wanted to ask about your opinion on what is happening today. As far as I'm aware and what I've uh, read in uh, reports uh, that uh, um, Dutch farmers uh, protest in Netherlands by blocking traffic, um, it, blocking supermarket distribution uh, and uh, blocking the pathways to the several cities, at least this is what I read. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are enraged by the government plans uh, that they may require uh, to use less uh, fertilizers and reduce their uh, total livestock. Farmers in the Netherlands who are outraged by the government's efforts to reduce nitrogen pollution by breeding fewer pigs, cows, and chickens. In the fight to combat climate change, governments are forced to make drastic changes which aren't welcomed by all. The truth is, climate change will impact all of our lifestyles. So chaos like this has only begun. Let's learn more. First up, let's talk about the emotion and hurt felt by Dutch farmers. People in the Netherlands are hanging the Dutch flag upside down to protest along roads and bridges. In an effort to satisfy environmental goals, there will be a drastic 30% drop in the breeding of animals. In recent weeks, farmers have demonstrated outside regional legislatures and ministers' residences, blockaded major routes with hundreds of tractors, and shut down food delivery centers. A police officer is accused of firing a gun at a 16-year-old farmer's son during the course of one late-night demonstration. It comes as Dutch authorities have revealed there has been some uh, protests, protests in Belgium as well, but not not uh, like in uh, in the Netherlands mm -hmm. about it. Uh, but yeah, I can't really. I don't have really a lot to say about it because we farm in such a different way, and uh, I don't know if it will make if it will make an impact uh, on our farm. If it would be uh, like a big impact. But then, Only... for, exa for example, if they start mm. right now, and then, uh, just an example, what if Belgium government will impose the same to say you have to reduce until 2030 your livestock by 50% or 30%? How would do you think that the, the Belgian farmers will react to it? Yeah, they, they, they won't just uh, accept it. Yeah, that's true. Uh, like our our farm, we are uh, like ground bound mm -hmm. with our animals. We only have so many animals, and that are uh, the, the amount of farmland can sustain. But uh, there are some really big farms that that don't have necessarily that that a high amount of ground. Mm -hmm. But they just import a lot of feed, and uh, and and uh, the ground which they cultivate. Then they fertilize with chemical uh, nitrogen mm -hmm. uh, fertilizers and all. That's that's already a whole different way of farming compared to okay. how we are farming. So I don't think our our own impact isn't uh, mm -hmm. as high as as uh, those kind of farms. Mm -hmm. Understood. Um. But nothing against those farms. They they kind of have been pushed into that kind of system as well. So it's hard to get out of that system once you're in that kind of farming way. Yeah, and you're in in with with a, quite a lot of money or uh, investments that have to be paid off. So. Yeah. yeah. Also, I can only imagine if you're, let's say, you have so much yield with uh, fertilizers and then you depend on the yield 
from those fertilizers and then mm. all of a sudden government is saying you know you're not allowed to use fertilizers anymore or in addition to that you have to reuse your uh, your stock so all your um, budget is no longer working <laughs> and functioning yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah I guess the the thing that, that really is the problem is people are not willing to pay enough for the food compared to what people used to pay uh, for food I mean like several hundred years ago yeah but again I, I the thing is that the prices for everything went up so mm. for example average uh, worker would be able to afford the car let's say five years ago in these five years mm. the majority of the salaries did not increase mm. however the prices um, for housing, for the heating, mm. uh, for food did increase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, your budget is not allowing you to yeah, have yeah, those yeah, things I, I anymore. Understand. So yeah, th yeah. that's why it's also for the for the people like even if they if they I mean I, I think they just can't. Mm. That's it. That's the bottom line. Would their salary also fall with the prices mm. uh, and, and, and the profit margins of, mm. uh, of uh, some larger companies? Um, yeah, then I don't think that people would mind to pay more, mm -mm. but they just can't. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Again, that's just my opinion. I may be wrong. <laughs> um, and then the next uh, question would be about the the plain chicken breed. Uh -huh. um, as far as I'm aware, we have several top breeds, uh, Leghorn and uh, um, Rhode Island Preds. What do you recommend for a new farmer? Um, we just get the kind of like industrial uh, layer chicken, but uh, more of the, the the Rhode Island Reds or the Longman Brown or mm -hmm. of those kind of uh, the, the brown laying chickens. That's, mm -hmm. that's the one we use uh, we also prefer them uh, instead of the the white leghorn chicken because mm -hmm. the leghorns tend to fly more or uh, okay. a bit more nervous bird than uh, than, than the other layers okay. or that that's what we what we have noticed in the past understood yeah. and um, uh, how much money is needed to start a chicken business so you probably need it some kind of shelter for them or a chicken tractor mm -hmm. um, buying the the, the, um, the eggs or buying the, the smaller I mean the young chicks mm -hmm. uh, all of that requires money no, ma no matter w which way you approach it yeah uh, so uh, what would be the uh, let's say minimum to start this chicken business and how many chickens is needed because you're probably not going to make a lot with just one chicken right you need some sort yeah. of a bulk of uh, I think of the, the minimum is around 200 mm -hmm. uh, chickens and even then it's not like you're making a full wage uh, with that amount okay uh, um, our kind of stable was around 35,000 euros but you can also, if you, you're like a handyman and, mm -hmm. and you like to build stuff your own, uh, maybe you can buy, uh, make something similar for, uh, I don't know, let's say 10,000 euro. Okay. But uh, you, you mean uh, 3,500 euros is for a chicken tractor? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. a chicken tractor. Yeah. All right. Um, and and, and per bird? Uh, per bird, I think last time it was, around 13 euro 80 cents or something okay and what was the um, either weight or the um, uh, how old was the bird uh, around uh, 16 or 17 weeks old mm -hmm. kind of like point of lay ah uh, so uh, just when it starts yeah okay yeah. Yeah. just uh, you need to wait like a few weeks more and then uh, the, the first eggs will come okay all right all right um, in, in terms of the feed, um, is uh, how much feed do you do you give 
so is 30 grams of feed per head per day is would it be enough or this is too small uh, and what ingredients must chicken feed include like a core the most important ones um we calculate with around 130 gram a chicken mm -hmm. uh, of uh, chicken feed okay and yeah we just buy like a pre-mixed uh yeah layer feed mm -hmm. uh, depending on on the, the recipe of the feed is, is depending of the age of the birds okay i can i think in the beginning they need more uh, protein compared to a more older bird okay so yeah just uh, the recipe of the feed will change during their, mm -hmm. their lifetime all right and you buy it from certain uh producer industrial producer or it's a smaller company who just grows the this crops and then mixes himself or uh, uh it's more like an in industrial, industrial uh yeah, yeah. All right. but still they work with only uh, organic uh ah, okay and stuff, yeah. understood um now when, how you organize it uh how many nest boxes uh needed per let's say 100 layers just rough estimate or is it one box per five or uh, per four or per ten i don't know um in our uh, chicken tractor uh it's like uh not really nest boxes but like a communal uh nest box mm -hmm. like uh quite a big space where a lot of chickens can can uh, lay uh, eggs at the same time okay um, I think in our chicken tractor it's for 200 birds, let's say close to 8 or 9 meters of, uh, yeah, of mm -hmm. laying space. Okay. <laughs> I don't know how to uh, explain it more. All right. Uh, it kind of does the job. <laughs> and I, I remember that you uh, were also doing a little bit of boilers and uh, broilers excuse me broilers. <laughs> um, uh, are chicken layers more profitable than uh, I think in the, you can make more money quicker with uh, broilers mm -hmm. it only takes like six to eight weeks depending on how, how big you want them mm -hmm. and then you you can have your return uh, um, yeah, I think it's if you can sell all your broilers, you're probably off better doing broilers mm. uh, if you want uh, a lot of profit in, uh, fast. Okay, yeah. understood. Um, how much time is needed per day for the for the uh, for the chickens that you have? Um, Around, depending how far the, the stable is from the farm, it's around 15 to 13, uh, 30 minutes. Yeah. Okay. All right. So about 15 minutes clear. Yeah. Now, if we uh, go to the next question, it's about the cows. Um, hay for the cows. How much land and hay is required per cow per year? I think you can have around almost two cows on one hectare. Uh, like that's, that's how much land you need to do mm -hmm. enough feed if it rains enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's kind of like. Uh, yeah. Right. Um, and what is the minimum investment needed to start a new cow business? Uh, that really depends how, how big you want to go with it. Um, I guess if you just want to milk cows, like uh, for a homestead, you can get a cow maybe around, let's say, roughly 1,000 or 1,300 euro. Mm -hmm. uh, you need some, some kind of stable. 
you need a milking tank uh, to cool the milk. And if you want to go bigger, yeah, of course you need a bigger stable, more cows. You need a stable for the cows which you are milking. You need a stable for the calves to stay in. You need a tractor to mow your, uh, your hay. Uh, yeah, it's, you want to go like a really um, normal sized farm or normal sized dairy farm you can go pretty high I guess <laughs> for an investment right. I mean I think it's easy more than half a million if you yeah. okay all right uh, if you need to dry everything. and then we, as we, when we spoke about the chickens the time how time consuming it is if for the chickens it's about 15 minutes per day how much it is for the cows you have to milk them two times right yeah yeah uh, over here we were milking two times um yeah the cows are way more of a time investment than compared to chickens mm -hmm. definitely um in your rough estimate the milking usually takes two hours mm -hmm. uh, for each uh, session right. so that's already around four hours mm -hmm. um then in during the, the summer season, they're just uh, in, in, the, in the fields grazing mm -hmm. for their food, uh, feed. And then uh, in winter, they don't come outside anymore because it's too wet outside. And then you have to feed uh, the cows every day. Mm -hmm. So then in, in the winter, it's actually more, uh, you need more time uh, mm -hmm. to look after the cows compared to the summer. Okay, regarding the greenhouse. Mm -hmm. Since you have two beautiful greenhouses that I can see here, uh -huh. um, uh, greenhouses with heating, is it worth it? What do you think? We don't really heat them, mm -hmm. only when, uh, when we have our, like in, in spring, when we have our, our tomatoes planted mm -hmm. and they uh, say we'll have like a strong frost uh, or a couple of days of frost all right yeah uh, or in, that's then frost in the, in the morning or in the night mm -hmm. uh, then we put in a like a burner just to keep the frost out okay but not not to like heat it uh, continuously to 10 10 or 15 degrees okay that's, that's not what we do so. and uh, uh, what type of energy you use is it uh, electricity uh, based or uh, it's, uh, it's uh, gasoline. Gasoline, okay. Yeah. All right. Understood. What veg vegetables are best grown in greenhouse like yours? Uh, during the summer, uh, cucumbers, tomatoes. So that's the cherry tomatoes, right? Yeah, this is a uh, cherry tomato and uh, the variety is uh, Sakura. All right. This is the cucumber. <laughs> right, cucumber. Do you have uh, only these big ones or do you have also some small? Uh, we have the, the small one as yeah. well. Okay, perfect. Uh, bell peppers, or just sweet peppers and, and uh, spicy peppers. Or quicker than uh, the big ones. This is just like a, a sweet uh, pepper. <laughs> okay. Uh, aubergines. And then uh, during winter, we have spinach. Uh, aubergine. aubergine. Okay. Uh, and then in early spring, some zucchini sometimes as well in the greenhouse. And then uh, in, in fall, winter, and, and the beginning of spring, uh, we have some lettuce, spinach. Uh, celery, Brussels sprouts. Okay. Uh, some brassica species. Uh, and these are strawberries. <laughs> nice. Trying this year. Uh -huh, what's that? These are uh, long beans. Oh, never seen such long beans. <laughs> yeah, it's the first time for us as well. Wow. It's uh, a green cauliflower. Cool. It's kind of curly tail. And in Netherlands, how do you call it? Burko. Uh, yeah, that's what we usually call mm -hmm. during the, the year. In, uh, 
So that's mint. Yeah. For the mint tea. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, what veget vegetables bring the highest return? Um, I would assume that some are growing for variety and, and some could be more effective than the others or it doesn't work this way. Um, for us it really doesn't work that way mm -hmm. uh, because people just come here and subscribe to the farm with their whole family mm -hmm. and they just come harvest what they need okay. for personal use. Uh, so but in terms of the costs of growing, are they all the same? Uh, ah, I uh, see what you mean. Um, like tomatoes is a way bigger of time investment compared to growing lettuce. Uh, head lettuce. Yes. Okay. But then again, you can harvest quite a lot of tomatoes from one plant. So it returns more, but it's quite a big of investment with also where the, the plants are more expensive mm -hmm. and it takes more time and, and more labor mm -hmm. to trellis the tomatoes and all. Yeah. But I, can, I guess you cannot really get away without uh, with not growing tomatoes because they're so popular. Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> that yeah. would be a bad decision. <laughs> yeah. um, what vegetables are easiest to grow? from all the varieties that you have um, uh, during which season or um, any any uh, lettuce is also lettuce. Not always easy <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay and then during summer uh, yeah, zucchinis mm -hmm. once they are established they you can't keep up eating uh, <laughs> zucchinis so. okay yeah. Um, and how much time per day is uh, needed for the uh, vegetables? Because you have not only have um, three greenhouses, but mm -hmm. you also have outside vegetables, and mm -hmm. seems to seem to have a lot. Oh yeah. Uh, so we started with chicken, 15 minutes per day. <laughs> then we went for the cows, about four hours per day, rough, rough estimate to, during the day. What mm -hmm. about the the, <clears throat> the vegetables? Uh, yeah, well, but the cows is uh, more my father-in-law that uh, okay. has the cows, so I don't kind of lose time uh, okay. <laughs> with the cows. Uh, and then uh, with the vegetables, uh, during the season, it's easily around, let's say, every, we kind of work every day, so mm -hmm. seven days a week, but it's easily around six to seven hours a day. Savoy. Cool. Savoy cabbage and this is uh, pak soy. But also you have work uh, on a desk as well, like uh, on the computer. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. And uh, on the computer, meaning uh, doing um, some bookkeeping or meaning uh, offers or um, doing the planning, like what's done yeah. today with tomorrow or like uh, bookkeeping. Mm -hmm. uh, the the planning, also the the ordering from like we need those kind of plants in in, in that that week of the year, and then uh, like we know uh, when we plant uh, a lettuce plant, uh, we will have lettuce a couple of weeks later. Mm -hmm. But then of course the lettuce goes bad, mm -hmm. or you need to grow new lettuce, so you have to uh, order. So you prefer to buy already um, kind of matured plant. And then you have to transplant it, or you you prefer to buy seeds, or you have a mix. If it's if it is a mix, what's the percentage? We kind of do a mix. Um, our uh, fruiting plants like tomatoes yeah. uh, and cucumbers. Oh, it's also and all. Okay. Uh, we yeah. try to grow ourselves from seeds, mm -hmm. and then uh, let's say lettuce, cabbage, uh, those kind of vegetables like cauliflower and broccoli and all. We buy as a French mm -hmm. and, and carrots and All right. uh, parsnip and other root vegetables. We uh, direct seed. Mm -hmm. <coughs> what would be your ideal greenhouse, regardless of the costs, if you would build it um, during 
2022 during this year mm -hmm. from the scratch and money is, is not an issue yeah, it's not an issue. <laughs> just the perfect green house uh, i guess uh we would go for a glass greenhouse mm -hmm. because it insulates more in uh, mm -hmm. <clears throat> in the colder uh, parts of the year also Good. with a big volume of air okay so Meaning higher than three meters or uh... yeah higher is is better for to have more like a stable climate inside mm -hmm. and also the the hottest air rises uh, away from the crop stem okay um, with a so automatic uh, irrigation system, okay. <laughs> like overhead irrigation. Uh, uh, overhead, so not just on a, on a, uh, on a rows of. Uh, yeah, uh, like ones. the like a drip tape is is good for uh, like to uh, tomatoes and cucumbers and all. Okay. But for lettuce, it would be easier to just. Do it overhead. Okay. Yeah. Would would everything work overhead? Like uh, to have uh, without um, drops, just everything. Like just to set the terrain. Hmm. Um. It's not the best thing to do with tomatoes, okay. because then you can get a, a, like a, a mold infection. Ah, okay. So. That's why you, we use clip tape. What honey plants would you pick if you had 20 hectares of uh, dedicated land? And how many hives w would it feed? Uh, 20 hectares, I mean, how many hives could it feed? Um, it's really hard to say how much it can feed mm -hmm. because it also depends on how much rain you get, how windy it is. Uh, the temperature temperature as well okay like over here actually it's not the best place to have bees mm -hmm. because it's it tends to get dry quite quite fast uh, so the the plants or the flowers that they they don't have enough nectar mm -hmm. for the bees uh, but if if uh, rain or, or uh, a high enough water table is, is not a problem then i would grow uh, like a, like a linden trees linden. Mm -hmm. uh, and give quite enough uh, a lot of honey uh, during june july mm -hmm. and then uh, for spring i would plant a variety of uh, willow trees mm -hmm. because you have a really nice flow of uh, willow pollen and, and nectar it, it kind of makes a like a really good start for the rest of the season mm -hmm. um, and then maybe to fill in the gaps you can maybe sow like some phacelia or or have like clover growing in the, in the pasture mm -hmm. uh, raspberries mm -hmm. is also something they like to fly on yeah, stuff like that. All right, and let's imagine these twenty hectares are planted perfectly, mm -hmm. and then you have uh, a lot of uh, blooming and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And then, question comes, and you're alone. How many hives is without moving them, just mm -hmm. stationary, can one man uh, handle? You mean like a full-time job yes. or more like a no, no, full-time. Full time, yeah. So the estimate is that we planted enough mm -hmm, in yeah. these 20 hectares, uh, a lot of varieties, and then assuming that uh, they have enough. <laughs> yeah, that really depends on, on how good of a beekeeper you are and, and how fit you are, okay. like uh, how good your back is. All right, average. Uh, average? Yeah. <laughs> uh, then uh, I would guess like 30 hives will be enough work for you then okay yeah so tw 20 is let's say n not to be under pressure to to, to have it uh... yeah if, if there are not a lot of plants and, and there there is a lot of uh, nectar flowing yeah. then yeah it should be possible yeah. okay all right good um 
what is the most profitable activity on the on your farm? The, yeah, the I think it's it's square meter. At the moment. Uh, like a nice. amount of euro. Uh, Sorry, for a meter be, uh, summer leaf. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it would be flowers. <laughs> flowers. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Okay. Yeah. What but about the food? If we take because flowers you cannot really eat too much. No, of them as a you human. can't eat them. No. <laughs> I think with the vegetables we kind of have like a similar income mm -hmm. on one and a half hectare uh, compared to the dairy. So that's a cooler, right? Okay. That's a cooler. And that's the temperature. Hectares. Mm -hmm. That it's the, the kind of like the same amount of uh, return. Okay. We get. Yeah. And if you go for the vegetables, mm -hmm. for example, for a greenhouse vegetables and um, the normally outside, is there a comparable uh, or can you compare the income from from those? Or greenhouses always more profitable in terms of the return um yeah i think they they can be more profitable okay. if you uh have like your tomatoes and cucumber and yeah uh, once those plants are established you can harvest quite a lot of weeks mm -hmm. from just one planting of course you have the trellising work and, mm -hmm. and the pruning uh, i have experience growing for two years uh, a tomato from the seed at home mm -hmm. And during the first year, I had a large, yeah, a lot of uh, tomatoes mm -hmm. uh, harvested. But the second year was incomparable, <laughs> just a, um, a handful. Really. Yeah. Is it also the same, or is it just me? Or if you, if you would leave it for the second year, the same plants, would they also give just a, a little bit comparing to the first year? The same plant? Yeah. Ah, we we have to use new plants every okay, year. Okay, so yeah. n never done. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they they <laughs> can't survive winter. <laughs> okay, yeah. all right. Um, uh, now in twenty twenty two, how much money is needed to start a farm? Uh, what advice and what advice would you give for someone who would want to start a regenerative farm? Don't try to do. Too much different enterprises at once. Okay, meaning focusing on on yeah a couple of things. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and also, I wouldn't focus just on one thing. Okay. Because if you have a bad season with that one thing, then you're screwed. Yeah. <laughs> you have no season anymore <laughs> if yeah. you're unlucky. Uh, And about how much money, like bare minimum to start. I understand that it can scale to mm -hmm. any, depending how much land you have and how many greenhouses you, you can afford. But like a bare minimum, without which better not to not to even uh, not to even start. I think like a average size market garden, you could probably start for around fifteen to twenty thousand mm -hmm. euro of investment. Assuming that you already have a land, it's yeah, just uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, the thing about land, it's especially here in in Belgium, it's quite hard to earn enough enough income to pay for your land with okay. agriculture. All right. So uh, you more depend on renting renting uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, land okay. than buying land. And do you know how, how much does it cost per hectare? Or just self estimation, farm rent. Uh, if it's uh, rent, I think uh, rent, uh, renting goes around five to a thousand a hectare, depending what, what kind of land it is. If it's good land or bad land. Five, sorry. Uh, five to uh, five hundred to thousand euro. Okay. Uh, All right. So All it right. really depends of the 
the quality of the land. Mm -hmm. Understood. Yeah. Okay. And if somebody would rent uh, this land, is it even possible to like, be profitable? With I assume that's not a low price, thousand per uh, per, uh, per hectare, or it's still workable. With cows, it's not possible. <laughs> cows are possible. <laughs> no. No, no. Vegetables, maybe. Uh, yeah, vegetables it can be. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Understood. Well, that's great. <laughs> we, we run through the, all the questions.